Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to this Blender animation and physics tutorial where we see how to create the fluid simulation. And I decided to use the Lost in the Sea scenario that we created in past tutorials, which I also left a link in the description for those who are curious to create the scenario. We will see how to create fluids directly in a scene, instead of a simple test with a cube or a sphere, which already exists a lot. So, the idea, as you have seen in the beginning, is to create a stream of water, like a fountain of water, that comes from the mouth of the skull. And let's go ahead and we can already start by creating a sphere, which is going to be our source of water, and you can place it anywhere you want. Now we need the container for the water, which can be a box or any other geometry, and scale it up to only occupy where the water is going to be. Basically, we make sure that the box is big enough to contain all the fluid you want to simulate. And now I'm gonna rename the cube to fluid domain and the sphere to inflow source. Let's also tell Blender what are the obstacles for the fluids to collide with. And that's very simple to do. We basically select the object we want the fluids to collide with and go to physics and in fluid select obstacle. And we want to collide with the volume. So we don't need to change anything. But for example, if you wanted the fluid to collide with a glass of water, we would have to select both instead of only volume. Now, if you just have a few objects, you can select them and assign the obstacle individually. But if you have too many objects, which is my case, you can select all the objects and make sure that the last object you have selected contains the obstacle and you can press Ctrl L to choose modifiers. So it's basically going to create a link between all the objects you have selected and the last object which has the obstacle. And be careful because you will also copy every modifier from the active object, but that's the only way we currently have in Blender to apply obstacles to several objects at the same time. Ok, so we need to tell Blender that the sphere is going to be our fluid source. And for that we can go to Physics Separator and select Fluid and then choose Inflow. Inflow is basically going to create a stream of water and the inflow allows us to control the direction of the water. And as you can see, while I have the inflow object selected, I can see where the X, the Y and the Z axis are pointing, and the arrow points to the positive values. Now, if you leave these at zeros, the inflow will simply fall down. And that's not what I want in this case. I want the inflow to go forward which is basically in the y-axis, so I'm going to say 2 meters per second in the y-axis. And maybe it's too much. I will change this in a couple of seconds. And I also want to say that the water doesn't really go straight forward. It has a little deviation in the x-axis. Just a little bit. Now, for the big box, we want to select fluid, but this time it's going to be our domain. And by the way, we want to duplicate it with Shift D. And we need to move it with M to a new layer. And why we do this? We do this because, as you will see in a moment, when we start the simulation, the box will disappear and it's converted to fluid. And it's harder to know where the limits are. And for that, we always have that reference that we have duplicated to another layer. So, in the domain, we have these start and end options which represents the amount of time we want to simulate, but in seconds, not in frames. Which means, if we want to create a simulation with 60 frames per second, we have to count how many 60 frames there are in our simulation, and I'm gonna say 7 or 8 should it work, and of course this also depends on the amount of frames per second you have. Anyway, we also want to choose where Blender is going to save the fluid simulation files. And after doing so, we have one of the most important parameters, which is the resolution. 
and will allow us to create a more defined water with more resolution and more realistic if the number is higher. But this value changes a bit depending on the size of our contain, of our domain. Just to give you an example, my final resolution was something like 450, which generated 3 GB. And it wasn't that smooth or that perfect, just to give you an idea. But when we start simulating, we always want to start with small values. So we have faster simulations and we can see where the fluid is going. Now in the fluid boundaries, we have a very curious parameter which is the option to create or not to create the bubbles in our simulation. And it's controlled by unchecking or checking this option. And if you want to create bubbles, you also have to increase the subdivisions to 2 at least and you have to increase the generate value in the fluid particles. I'm not gonna use this, I'm not gonna generate bubbles, so I'm gonna leave this checked to remove the air bubbles. Just because this takes even more time to simulate the fluid. Now if you want for some reason to make your water disappear when reaching a destination, you can use the alt flow. And we can create a cube for this, or use any other geometry, and go to the physics tab, select fluid and choose alt flow. Also go to the object separator and we go to the last option where it says cycle settings and check ray visibility to camera, shadow and volume. Just to make sure it doesn't appear when rendering. By the way, if we wanted some initial water in the beginning, we could use a sphere, a cube or pretty much any other shape or geometry and place it wherever you want, wherever you want the initial water to be, and then in the physics tab, select fluid. And as soon as we press simulate, we can see the initial water being generated, and if you look closely, when the fluid touches the outflow object, the water disappears. And I'm not gonna use any outflow or any initial fluid, it was just to give you a side note, to give you a few tricks, and that may be useful to you. So, now that I pressed bake and you may have this warning which tells us that we can only have one domain and this warning only appears because we have duplicated our domain box a few seconds ago and we have to remove the domain from the other box. So let's go to the other layer and simply erase the domain. Now, when we press bake we may or may not see the box disappear. This is a common problem. And we can see if it's simulating fluid or not by moving back or forward in the timeline or in the dope sheet. And in my case, nothing is happening. This indicates two things. Either your inflow object is too small compared to the size of the domain or the resolution is too small to be able to reproduce any fluid from the inflow object. So we have two options, either we increase the resolution or either we increase the inflow object. And as you can see, when I exaggerate in the size of the inflow object and press bake, we have water everywhere actually, so it's working. I can also see that it's too powerful, so I'm gonna lower the Y axis in the inflow and my end values were something like 0 0.35 and as you can see by holding shift and pressing here in the layers where the other box is we always have a reference to the original size of the container and if you want to make the original container bigger after having done some simulations you can erase the simulations folder or, or simply rename to a new simulation and the original box will appear, allowing you to resize it. And if you want to go back to the simulation that you have done, you have to type in the name of that simulation here, and when you press enter, Blender loads the simulation. You have to tweak around between the size of your inflow object or if you don't want to change the size of your inflow object, you have to make the final resolution a bit higher or the domain a bit smaller. 
and by default when you are simulating in your viewport you will always see the preview mode and if you want to change it to the final you can do it here. It doesn't get much better in this case because the difference of the resolution between the final and the preview is not that big but when you increase the final value sometimes it gets really slow and it's really useful to change to the preview mode. Ok, so now it's better, it's still too strong in the y-axis, I'm gonna adjust it. And after doing your simulation, what really matters now is to create a material. And I already add this material that I made in the last tutorials. But I'm gonna do a very simple water material, like this, so let's create a new material, rename it. Come down here and select Node Editor. And I don't need the diffuse shader. We pretty much only need the glass shader with roughness set to zero and the index of refraction of water. If you Google it, it's one dot three three three. And if you want to add some color, we can use the volume absorption. Connect to the volume and choose the color. And that's a very simple water material that most of the times gets the job done. This was the material I had. If you want to copy it, go ahead, pause the video and do it. A very good trick for a better looking water is come here and check Auto Smooth. Because if you don't have this checked, you will probably get these darker edges, which are not very realistic. And if you check Auto Smooth, it will have these bright edges. Now you only need to render, that's it guys, that's it for our tips with fluids and tricks and problems that sometimes appears. And we have seen pretty much everything. Be careful because sometimes simulation takes a while in Blender. And that's it guys. So if you like it please subscribe for weekly Blender and game development tutorials. And I hope to see you in the next tutorial. Thank you for watching.